been a few Fridays now since my last five faves Friday and I have no excuses other than I just got busy but today I have another installment for you. I'm filming this on Sunday so I can get it up for Friday so if you're wondering why I look a little bit more made up than usual it's because I went for a makeup trial today at Sephora. I just I don't know I knew about it but it just clicked in that since I have hit the VIB Rouge status at Sephora that I could go in for unlimited makeovers so you just book an appointment and show up and they put a whole bunch of makeup on you. It's available to everyone but if you are not a VIB Rouge I think it, you can only get the makeover with a $50 purchase so I thought I would take advantage of the perk of being able to go for an unlimited makeover so I went and this is what um, the makeup artist came up with and I really really love it. She actually used a lot of the products I already own which is really great. I'm torn between doing my own makeup and getting someone to do my makeup. I think just for the stress-free factor of it, I might just get someone else to do it, but I'm not sure. She did try some new products on me like the primers and the eyeshadows, but this is what she came up with. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I also posted a photo on Instagram, I think, a little while ago, so if you want um, a still photo of how it looks, then please check that out. Anyway, that said, I'm gonna start with my favorites. So I'm going to start with a skincare thing that I've been really obsessing over. Skincare is such a personal thing because, you know, it depends on what your skin type is, what you like, if you have sensitive skin, dry skin, oily skin, combination skin. I have, for the record, combination skin. I have a very oily T-zone, dry or normal, pretty much everywhere else. Um, but this is a mask. It is from Shantakai, so it's not the least expensive mask that you could buy. I believe this is 1.5 ounces and it was about $108. The good thing is that it lasts quite a while because you only need a little small amount of it to cover your entire face. So this is the Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask. This mask does not have any anti-aging properties, so if you're looking for that kind of skincare, this isn't for you. This is really just to kind of revive your skin and bring back the hydration and I love it. So it comes in a jar and the product is really soft. It is almost like a gel-like consistency but once you start applying it onto your skin it really waters out. It's really nice. The instructions for this are to only leave it on for five minutes but the Chantecai associate that was helping me told me just to leave it on overnight and that's what I've been doing and my skin feels so nice after or the morning after. So I'm obsessed with this. I would highly recommend trying out a sample. They have samples. You can get them at the Chantecai counter. I got mine at the Chantecai counter at Saks on Queen Street, um, but they're really generous with samples, so you can always just try it out. I also wanted to note that since it comes in a jar, I have been using this little spatula that came with another product just to scoop out the product and um, I think it's a more hygienic way to do that. And also, if you do do this, don't forget to clean off the spatula too once you use it. I always just use um, isopropyl, so just rubbing alcohol just to give it a little wipe or a rinse just so that you know the bacteria isn't building up on this and then in turn your product. A makeup product I have been obsessing over is the Hourglass Blush in Diffused Heat. You guys know I'm obsessed with Hourglass products. I actually just picked up the new strobing powder. I wasn't going to do it because I was like, oh, I don't really need it, but I picked it up and I love it. So this is the more, I guess, coral, ready coral blush of the bunch. I like the veining on this. I took meticulous time to choose the perfect one that I wanted because it is, you know, you can see the, the veining of the blush a lot more prominently in this one, which I think adds to why I like it. It just adds a really beautiful, like, flushed look to my cheeks and uh, it wears really well and it just has a really nice natural soft luminous finish. I have to mention my favorite brow product of the moment and it is from the drugstore. The drugstore has never been known for having really great brow products until now. L'Oreal released a bunch of different brow products. This is their brow stylus definer and I got mine in dark brunette amazing. This is very similar to the Anastasia Brow Wiz down to the fine tipped um, pencil and it just lasts all day. It's easy to apply and it's a fraction of the price of the Anastasia one so you really cannot go wrong. I'm so obsessed with this. Um, I still do have my Anastasia Brow Wiz and I'll alternate them and to be honest I cannot 
definitively say that one is better than the other because they both work equally well. So if you are looking for a really nice drugstore brow product, try this one out because it's very, very good. I picked up this nail polish last week and it's been around for a really long time. It's a part of the permanent Essie collection, but uh, I never picked it up until now and I love this color. It's a beautiful lilac shade. It's called Lilacism actually. Today is actually Sunday, March 20th or 21st. Anyway, it's the first day of spring today. So I just thought I would treat myself to a really nice spring-like manicure, especially since Easter is coming up. And uh, I just love this. It's a really pale, dusty lilac color and it looks so good on. The last thing I wanted to mention is this sponge. I believe they call it the Miracle Complexion Sponge. It's from Real Techniques. Um, so this is the packaging. I picked mine up from Walmart. It was two for $14 essentially. And I really, really like this. Up until now, I have been just strictly loyal to my beauty blender. So that's what I always use. I even got caught up in the hype of those little mini um, beauty blenders, those green ones. And uh, I do like them, but they are ridiculously overpriced, especially for something that is disposable. I mean, they do last quite a while especially if you don't use them every single day they have a really really long lifespan but they're still disposable products so when I heard that Walmart, Rexall, I think those are the two main places probably London Drugs if you're on the west coast but when I heard that um, all those stores were going to be carrying the Real Techniques version I had to go and find it and uh, it took me three different tries to find it, but I did, and I've been absolutely obsessed with it. It's a different shape than the Beauty Blender. The Beauty Blender, as you guys know, it looks like kind of like a, a giant sponge teardrop, um, but this one has like a flat edge here. So it is more egg-shaped, except for the you know, flat edge here. It does have a really nice pointed tip. It does have almost the same kind of buoyancy and denseness as the um, Beauty Blender, and it just works beautifully for everything. I've been using it for my base, whether it's the Shantikai Future Skin. It also works great with the um, Chanel Bronze Universal, which I've been busting out now that we're kind of going into more springish weather. And also Cream Blush, which I never really thought to try with a beauty blender or a makeup sponge, but it works great for that too. And concealer, because of the really nice pointed tip, it's great for spot concealing, blemishes, and things like that. Those were my five Friday faves, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please let me know again what you think of this makeup look if you think I should go for more of a darker defined eye I am getting lash extensions for my wedding so that's why I told the um, makeup artist not to add falsies again thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye